Hey guys, Lucas from iExplore here. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I want to really talk about cameras rather than what we usually do, which is go out and explore the city. Um, and the thing I want to talk to you about is uh, something that's been on my mind for the last couple of years is if I already own a really good SLR, a high-end DSLR, like a D4 or a D850 or a D780 or something like that, uh, is it worth it for me? Is it going to be a big difference for me to go with the mirrorless camera? Now, I'm not going to talk much about video because obviously for video, they're way better. So that goes, that goes without saying. But just in terms of photography, you know, how much has the Z6 changed my photography? So I pulled the, the trigger on my Z6 II you know, back in November, right when they came out. Finally decided to make the jump. But I wasn't 100% sure that I would like it more than the D4. You know, I just thought, I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. Now it's been a couple of months. I've been shooting with it a lot. And I think I could finally answer that question. And I don't want to be one of those YouTubers who makes you stay till the end of the video. So I'll give you the answer right away. Yes, it's totally worth it to get a Z6 II. But if you want to understand the details of exactly why I would say that, um, you know, you got to watch the whole video and find out. Just before we begin, um, if you could, you know, check out our Patreon link in the description to help us out with the channel. And also, since this is a gear heavy video, I should point out that we have affiliate links for some buying some of this gear. So if you're interested in any of it, please click on those links. It helps us out a lot. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. I explore. All right, guys, so the first, I want to get out of the way the kind of fundamental physical attributes of the camera. So I want to talk about the size, the, the weight, and the battery life, which are not the most important things to me, but just want to get that out of the way. It's the elephant in the room. So first of all, in terms of um, size, I opted for the grip, as many of you who watch this channel know. And um, for me, this is important because of ergonomics, which we'll get to later. But the grip obviously adds weight. It adds about like 450 grams, I want to say, according to my notes here and with two batteries in there, right? And with that, it actually makes the camera very similar in size. Ignore the lens here, but just in terms of the, the camera size. And also very similar in terms of the weight. Um, the D4 is 1340 grams, as, as it is with the battery, and the Z6 II with the grip and two batteries is 1290 grams. So there's only about a 50 gram difference. Um, so to me, it was not much of a change. But of course, for many people, if you, you know, if you don't put the grip on, you do have a much smaller, lighter camera with very, you know, with very good capabilities. So that's nice. But for me, it mattered to have the, uh, the ergonomics here. If you're coming from like a D850, 780, there, you know, this would be a heavier package, right? Because, because of the grip uh, makes it heavier. But for me, that's not important. In terms of size, that's, I also didn't really care. A lot of people want smaller cameras, uh, and that's what the benefit of mirrorless is. But for me, um, I actually prefer it bigger because it sits more comfortably in the hand. Um, and in fact, the D4 here is a, quite the beefcake. It feels really good in the hand, very solid. Um, finally, in terms of battery life, of course the D4 and any SLR has way better battery life. So that's not really a surprise here. But what did surprise me about using this for a few months is that the Z6 really doesn't have as bad battery life as people would say. In fact, I did a session the other day where I, out of one battery, I got over 800 shots. I did shoot kind of a lot and I was using the EVF pretty much the whole time. I prefer the EVF over the back screen for most photos. Um, and then because I have two batteries, that means I could, in theory, get probably about 1,500 shots between the two batteries in the grip, which is really not bad. It's not as good as the D4, but it's getting up there where it's perfectly practical to use it that way. Okay, the next thing that is very important, which I alluded to in the last section, is the ergonomics of the camera. So as I already mentioned, the vertical grip is a must. It just lets my hand sit more comfortably here. If I take it off, then my pinky sort of has nowhere to go. And also for doing you know, portrait-oriented shots vertical, it's just more comfortable to shoot this way rather than reaching over. Now, of course, the D4 and big SLRs like that one have the grip integrated as well. You don't even need, need to buy it. And for other cameras like a D850, you can just buy a grip. Now, actually, because this grip is separate, and it's actually bigger and a little bit more comfortable to hold even than the integrated one on the D4. Um, both cameras are very comfortable in the hand, which is very important for me, much more important than the weight. Because even if a camera's light, if it doesn't feel good in your hand, your hand's going to get tired holding it for a long, for a long time or extended periods. Um, I do have some pet peeves about like button placement. You know, I, I feel like the compensation button's a little too far to the right. It would be cool if they swapped it with the ISO button or if you could just swap the functionality in the uh, customizable controls. But overall, I like that they put all the buttons on the right side here so they're all accessible by your right hand. Only a couple of unimportant buttons are more on the left side here. 
Um, I'm not a fan of these dials. I like to have a mode button like on the D4, but not a big deal. It really doesn't matter so much. And one last thing, I do, of course, appreciate the quieter shutter. Now, having said that, the loud shutter on the D4 is pretty cool, right? Sounds impressive. It's fun to, to have a loud shutter sometimes, but in a practical sense, it, it really doesn't help. It's better to have a quieter shutter. And I do shoot sometimes uh, events, corporate events, things like that. So this much more subtle shutter is better. Not to mention that you can turn on the electronic shutter, which is completely silent. And um, of course, you might have issues with lighting in certain, certain lighting situations, but generally it's, it's cool to have that option. The D4 did have a silent shutter function way back in the day, but it didn't work very well. But I think more recent SLRs like the D850, D5, they do have pretty good silent shutters, is my understanding. But I don't remember that one for sure, so don't quote me on it. All right, let's move on. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the more you know, technical stuff, not about the feel of the camera, but the actual specs. And that brings me to the sensor. And now, of course, compared to an eight-year-old camera, the D4, the sensor is you know, modern, it's been updated, um, it's much better. Although it is the same as the Z61, which came out two years ago, so there's about a six-year difference in tech between these cameras, I'd say, something like that. Um, and yeah, it's better, of course it's better. I mean, it has a little bit better dynamic range. It's bigger, it's 50% more pixels, you know, more megapixels, right? So you get uh, more resolution, which means if you do get more noise or if you do get a particular amount of noise in the 100% image, if you scale it down to the same resolution as this camera, some of the noise goes away, right? But compared to more modern cameras like a D750, 780, you know, um, even a D500, there's not as big of a gap. So for me, this was a big improvement in the sensor. Um, although the D4 is still really good, especially when playing around with, like pushing around the shadows in post in the RAW, you get very good noise performance on the D4. There's a little bit, I would say, a tiny bit more noise in the shadows sometimes on the Z6, depending on how you edit, which actually is the biggest difference that I find between the two um, cameras and the two sensors. And, and this is true also for like, for example, the D850, which I've shot with quite extensively. When editing a RAW from the D4 or D850, it feels mostly the same. I don't have to change much how I edit, but I find there were some quirks with how I edit the Z6 RAWs. Now that could just be Adobe's you know, profiles for the new camera that are not quite accurate, and that's causing you know, differences there. Maybe, I'm not sure, but I find I have to kind of edit slightly differently in terms of, mainly in terms of how I push and pull shadows, and um, a little bit in terms of how the white balance and colors turn out. But no complaints, it's still fantastic. Uh, there is one last thing, because it's a BSI sensor, backside illuminated sensor, it, they say that you get about two-thirds to a stop of more light, you know, so meaning that if you're going to shoot something on, say, you know, 200 ISO on this camera, on this camera, about 100 ISO would get you the same exposure, roughly speaking. And I do find that to be true in non-scientific tests, but um, in my anecdotal experience, I did notice that I just feel like the ISO generally can be a little bit lower on this. Okay. Not to mention that the camera has IBIS, which, you know, that's a game changer in that regard. But that's the next section. So that brings me to the in-body image stabilization, which is a big difference for me, a big game changer. Um, and actually more than I even expected. You know, I knew that it would be useful for like action shooting. And I knew that sometimes in low light, you know, I want to I have no choice because the ISO gets very high and, you know, the aperture is maxed out and I still need a little bit more than I could get a low shutter, use a slow, slow shutter speed. But what I'm realizing is that I actually use the slow shutter speed even when I don't really need it. When the ISO it can, you know, go high, I'm only on like a thousand ISO, but I just put the shutter speed really low anyway because why not? I could drop the ISO even more. So for example, on the D4, I would regularly go down to a 60th, sometimes I would go down to a 30th, anything below that and I would really have to, you know, hold my breath and try to get really stable. But on the Z6, I could get it down to, you know, a tenth of a second very comfortably, and if I can, if I can hold my breath and really try to get steady, I can get it down to a half second. And that's really cool. Not so much because, okay, there's not enough light. There's plenty of light in the scene, you know, the ones I'm using this for. I might, I could go higher on the shutter speed. But it's nice to be able to go so slow that the ISO ends up really low and then you get more pristine images, which again creates this positive feedback loop where like not only do the images look better in terms of ISO overall, but I can also reduce the uh, shutter speed even more and therefore get an even lower ISO. It also allows for creative shots that I normally wouldn't be able to do without a tripod, like motion blurs of people and things like that. 
um, you know, even though basically I can just do it more right out of the box. I don't have to think, oh, I got to set up my tripod. I can just do it. So having the IBIS in there is a bigger plus than I actually expected, and I'm really glad that it's there. It's a very cool feature. Um, and then when coupled with VR lenses, it's also really nice. Yeah. So big plus for the Z6. So I saved the most important reason for last. The main thing that interest me, interested me about mirrorless cameras in the first place, in particular the Z6, and then the Z6 II eventually, is the way the autofocus works. And I don't just mean like there's eye tracking, face tracking. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, very useful. But it's more about, again, kind of going back to an earlier point, the ergonomics of the autofocus. So first of all, you know, because you have an uh, EVF, right, you can see more clearly where things are in focus or not. That's a big plus. But also the focus point can move around the entire screen. And many people who are shooting mirrorless already know this, right? But on, and, and, you know, even on an SLR, when I use the, uh, the back, you know, the live view, it's the same. You can use the whole screen, right? You can put the focus point right into the bottom right corner, top left corner, it's fine. But when you're using the viewfinder, the optical viewfinder, you cannot. It's usually limited to a section sort of in the middle. Now, I like to use tracking focus. That means AFC plus 3D tracking on the D4 or um, what do they call it? Auto wide area auto focus and then subject tracking on the Z6. And um, in both cases, I like to focus on my subject in the center and then move the camera around while having the tracking point you know, follow them around the subject when I recompose. For example, that's one way I use it, okay? And it's just much faster and much better, more reliable and more effective, like more easy to get that focus point where I need it to be on the mirrorless camera. And that's what really interested me about it. Not to mention the fact that once you do get your focus point on your subject, it tracks it better than the, Z, than the D4. Now the D4 for an eight-year-old camera is actually pretty impressive how well it tracks, but the Z6 just, yeah, mops the floor with it. It's much better. And of course, part of that is because it's identifying features in the image so it can see faces and eyes and all that. But even when I'm not focusing on those kinds of things, just, you know, buildings, random pipes, or a car driving by, whatever it might be in the city, in the photography that I'm doing, the autofocus is just better. It's very fast, very accurate, very reliable, and it tracks extremely well. And that was the, the big improvement for me, and that's the, the kind of the reason I wanted the camera, and the camera did not disappoint. Okay. And so that brings me to the last thing, which for me was the most contentious issue, the thing I was most apprehensive about, which is the EVF. Now, of course, the EVF comes with tons of advantages. One of them is that you can see more closely what you're going to, you know, what you're going to get in the end, the result, although it's not always exactly the same thing as what you get. It's not that close to what you get, but it's very close. It also is generally brighter. So when dealing in low light situations, you know, even though the, the viewfinder in like a D4 is very big and lets in a lot of light, it's not quite as bright, you know, as the EVF, which brightens up the image for you. Um, it also allows you to focus more easily because you can just see if things are sharp much more easily. You can, of course, zoom in using the, the zoom function on the back so you can blow stuff up. Very good for manual focusing, which I use fairly regularly. Um, there's also the fact that it, uh, you know, you can see your colors more accurately right away and it previews the aperture for you right away. That's a big one. Um, so when I'm on f8 on the Z6, I'm actually seeing through the viewfinder f8. The, shutter, the aperture is shut down to f8. On an SLR, the aperture is always wide open until you actually go to take the photo. When you press the shutter button, the aperture closes down, then it takes the picture and then the aperture opens back up, which means you're not seeing the real DOF of the photo as you're taking it. And that actually to me is even more important than the uh, more useful, I should say, than the uh, exposure. What you see is what you get. I don't care so much about seeing the exposure. Again, it always ends up a little different anyway, but I do care about seeing the um, depth of field live and in the viewfinder like that because, you know, that's something that will affect the photo, it affects where I'm focusing and things like that. Having said that, I know that on SLRs there is a DOF preview button, there's one right there, and when you press it, the aperture will shut down and you can see the new DOF. However, because it's an optical viewfinder, when the aperture gets smaller, what happens? It lets in less light and the image gets darker, so it gets harder to see, especially in low light situations. That's where the EVF is a big plus because it just brightens up the image by cranking up the ISO for the preview, and so you can see what you know what the aperture very or the what the aperture or what the DOF is going to look like very clearly. There is one drawback though, one thing I don't like, and that is how laggy it is when it turns on. Now this might just be a Z6 thing versus other mirrorless cameras. I don't know, they might be better, 
But having tried them all in the stores, they don't, didn't feel uh, such a big difference. But when you bring the viewfinder up to your eye, there is a slight lag before it turns on. And that lag annoys me. Sometimes it actually uh, affects me, my ability to get a photo right in the moment, like when I'm trying to be really quick about it. And this happens sometimes in street photography. I wish the camera would maybe understand better when you lift it up, you know, it goes from here to here, if the accelerometer in the camera could recognize that movement and say, ah, the camera's going up to the eye, I should turn the screen on so that it's already on before I put my eye there. That would be really nice. All right, guys. So that about covers everything that matters to me when thinking about, you know, going from the SLR to the mirrorless. Those are the things I considered. And when I finally did pull the trigger, those are the things I was really paying attention to as I was shooting with the camera for the last few months. So I hope you see that, you know, it is worth it. I definitely do not regret getting the camera. I think it was a great move for me. And I would encourage anybody who's thinking about it to do the same because honestly, it has been a big boon to my photography. Now, I'm not saying you need all these bells and whistles. You know, you don't need IBIS, BSI sensors, face tracking, eye tracking, all this, you know, fancy stuff. This is not a requirement to take beautiful and interesting images. I've been doing photography without this for years and I, very proud of my work up until now. And people before me have used even more simple cameras and of course film cameras all the way through the history of photography and people have created beautiful amazing artwork without the fancy tech. But the technology does make my life easier. It just makes it you know simpler and, and less, less work intensive to get amazing images. And I'm not into photography because I want to work really you know I want to make it as difficult as possible for myself. If I can make it easier great it's a tool. If I can use a better tool to achieve the same or better results, I'm going to take that opportunity. It doesn't hurt. Of course, cost permitting. So that's how I look at it. I wanted a new and better tool, one that hopefully expands how I shoot. And certainly the Z6 does allow me some new options, thanks to IBIS and the, the sensor quality and all that, in terms of low light performance. And since that's the kind of photography I often do, it was a very welcome um, improvement for me. Okay? So thank you guys for watching. I hope you found that interesting and informative. Of course, please, if you like our channel, subscribe, like the video, all that. Please consider supporting us on Patreon. And since this was a very gear-heavy video, I want to emphasize once again that if you're interested in buying any of the gear that I talked about or of the other lenses and gears that I use, please check all the affiliate links in the description. That will uh, definitely help us grow this channel and you know improve the quality and all that. So thank you so much for watching, and remember always, challenge your eye.